Good morning, Built for Bib partners, sponsors, community members. We thank you for joining us this morning, and we're going to get our program started with President Megan Blight. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. I am uh, Megan Blight. I am the very proud president of Wesleyan College, and usually I am dressed in purple, but today I'm Built for Bib. Yes. <laughs> so thank you for being on our campus today. Um, I have the distinct pleasure of meeting with Dr. Dan Sims early in my tenure and, and his tenure. And what uh, just gave me so much joy was how many intersections we had about helping young people succeed through education. I think many people uh, believe that private education is inaccessible. And here at Wesleyan College, we want to make sure that a private education is accessible because many young people require small classrooms and through those who have neurodiversity require different kinds of educational opportunities and those are, those are the types of things we do here. We nurture individual gifts. So as I shared this with uh, Dr. Sims, he said that's exactly right. Finding pathways for young people into educational spots that are the right fit for them are what we're interested in too. And we talked a little bit about this and things that we can do together and he said, and not only are we interested of course in young people, but we're wanting to make sure that we're always investing in our staff. Our staff are those who are, are giving every day to our students. And so we talked a little bit about that and he said, Megan, is there anything that we can do? And so today we wanted to announce this wonderful partnership between Wesleyan College and the district, the school district, where any staff member coming from Bibb County School District Schools uh, has a $5,000 scholarship for any master's program at Wesleyan College. I had suggested two, Dr. Sims says absolutely not, make it five, and I said yes sir. <laughs> So uh, as many of you might know, our master's programs, MBA, uh, master's in education, and a few other programs are for both uh, male and female learners. And so we have a table set up there if you are interested, but um, that will take a significant amount off the education. So I just wanted to announce that today, and thank you, Dr. Sims, for giving the opportunity, and welcome. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is James Freeman. I'm the uh, newly elected president of the Board of Education. Uh, I'm here to welcome you on behalf of the school board, on behalf of the school district. Uh, we want to thank you for being here for this uh, state of the district. Uh, I want to take a special opportunity to thank our elected officials here. I know I've seen uh, Mayor Miller, Commissioner Wynn, Commissioner Lucas, DA Howard, uh, Sheriff David Davis is here, members of their staff and officer here. I want to welcome especially my board members uh, and any other elected officials or dignitaries we have here. Uh, I want to thank you all for taking time. I've seen many friends and community partners who are here who are invested in our district, invested in our school system, making sure that Bibb County Public Education is the strongest it can be. And I want to thank you for being here. You've already had the opportunity to hear from the Central High School Orchestra as a proud graduate of Central High School. This time, as much as y'all want to hear from uh, Dr. Dan Sims, we, before that, we have a performance of who really matters, the children of Bibb County. We have the Burdell Hunt Leadership Choir. They'll please come up. Thank you.
Outstanding. Outstanding. Yep, show them some love, y'all. They need it. They deserve it. Fantastic. Y'all have another song? Okay, great. Give them a hand as they, as they leave the, the area. Fantastic. Love all of you. Job well done. And in the spirit of, of, of what they presented, thank you for showing up. It means a lot that you're here, and uh, we want to use this time not just to talk about what's happening, where the district is going, but uh, how we can get there together. So today is all about Together for Action. For one reason and one reason only, you can say it on the screen, what's the reason, y'all? Because what? Because they deserve the best. It, it should warm your heart anytime you get uh, around students and, and have that grand experience of seeing them exude who they are. And, and what we're trying to do as a school district, as is the case all over the world, is we're trying to bring out the dreams and the hopes and all of the power and, and the potential in every single student. And we realize we cannot do it by ourselves. Before I go any further, I want to take a moment and thank Westland College. Can we give Dr. Blight, Mr. Blair, a round of applause? They have been, they've been amazing partners. Uh, the partnership continues to grow, and we appreciate having this opportunity to come on this side of town and, uh, and, and bring all of us this way. So thank you so much, Dr. Blight, for always being a, a gracious partner and a, and a new friend. All right, where are we clicking? It's not working. I'll stay over here. Check, check. Now the mic went out. <laughs> okay, no batteries. You gotta get some back. Give me, give me the microphone. All right, we keep rolling. Teacher boys, <laughs> activate. All right, there we go. I think it's very important that we start and ground ourselves in our mission and our vision. As you know, we embarked upon a new strategic plan for the 2023 school year for the next five years. And our mission is to maximize student achievement and social and emotional well-being by building a sense of community and safe and equitable learning environments. And I want to lean in on the part that says building a sense of community. The beauty of this, this State of the District event is that it brings all of us together as a community to deal with what we all need to deal with, and that is how do we best serve all of our amazing students. And then our vision, students are empowered to learn, lead, innovate, and serve as productive and caring citizens within their chosen paths of success. I love how our students perform, but what really warms my heart is the day when they decide what they want to do. And what I want to be able to do is to give them hope in terms of that path. And I realize that one man can't do it, one district cannot do it, but it has to be a community effort led by the district, which brings us here today. I think it's important that you understand what my vision Check, check. All right, can we get some, somebody go to uh, Eckert. Is Eckert still open? No. <laughs> CBS, get some batteries. Eckert, just aged myself, didn't I? All day long. <laughs> you can find it. Not work. not work. So my vision is to cultivate a strong side of learning and to co-create a path to success for every single student. I want to lean in on the part that says co-create because I believe that if you're going to build an opportunity for a student, it has to be a co-creating experience, an experience that involves your community, that involves your district, that involves the parents, and, that, and of course, involves that student. So why are we after this idea for every single student? So the, my, my whole focus on community is something that uh, we're going to take our time, uh, but go after vigorously in the hopes that we can gather up literally everybody in that space. And it is such that we want to have every student walk across the stage. And after their experience of being with us, to be able to say that everything that happened in the city of Macon and in this experience that I call my public education, it was for me. So that when I graduate, I can either be master enrolled at, at Wesleyan College or Central Georgia Tech or another university college, Central Georgia State University, and or I will be motivated to enlist in the military, not just to go and enlist, but I've gotten information and inspiration that now motivates me to go in that route. And or that I'm motivated for not that I just go out and try to start a business on my own, but through experiences and exposure and, and, and enlightenment and examples of people like you in the room, I now feel ready to start my own business. And or I go straight to the workforce. Not that I go to a, to a job that really has no potential for growth 
or for retirement, but I'm meaningfully employed. That's the big idea. And if we get every single student, by the time they graduate, to have a level of exposure and experience and enlightenment that gets them to that space. And encouragement for people like you and all of your friends and your cousins and everybody else who wants to be a part of this movement, I believe we can make some great things happen, not just for those students, but for this whole entire city. We believe it strongly in our theory of action. And that is if we build stakeholder engagement with students, parents, staff, and community. And if we strengthen staff, staff effectiveness to drive teaching and learning, then we will maximize student achievement. And what I want you to capture in this, is not, as I hurry, is that it's not just limited to a staff making all these great things happen within our strategic plan. But it is starting with a level of engagement that strengthens this, that strengthens that. So, as you listen to the State of the District address, I want you to not only be thinking about the districts, I want you to think about yourselves. I'm looking around the room and it feels good. That last year this time, I would be looking at almost straight. Almost, because some of you I met by the side. But now it's difficult for me to say that I don't know anybody in, in, in this audience. Give yourselves a round of applause for that. So it means a lot to be amongst people who are already in the game and who are encouraged to do even more. And with that said, I want us to make sure we understand as a core of my vision this idea of together. We often throw out the word together, but there's a critical part of together that must be understood. The first part, in my opinion, is that every individual has to commit to having it together with whatever resource or whatever you bring to the table. And it is strong, it is vital, you are in a position to make a difference in the life of somebody. Thank you so much. All right. Hey, there we go. All right, stop yelling at y'all. I felt like I was scolding the whole audience. So that you have it together as individuals. And once you have it together, now you and a, and a president or you and a mayor can now come together and start gaining a relationship with each other. And once that relationship is gained among, among a group of people or between two people who have it together, then and only then can we maximize this idea of working together. So the end result, of course, is us working together. But the two that preceded are so important to make sure that we maximize the opportunity of working together. Let me back up for a minute. I stand before you speaking on behalf of 21,400 plus students. And I'm gonna do my best during this time to be their voice. And you'll know what I mean later on as I continue. And as I continue, this clicker. Our goals are simple, but loaded. Focused on student achievement, staff effectiveness, and stakeholder engagement. And today is primarily focused on stakeholder engagement, but we want to make sure that we give you some data in terms of our progress as a district up to this date. But before I go there, this is the big idea. And I literally want to gather up this entire city, y'all, in support of our students, in support of our district, in support of everything that we do. I want to be able to say that every nook, every cranny, every business, every church, every rec center, every everything, every governmental entity is pointed towards offering tangible support to the students and the families that we serve. It's gonna take some time to get fully there, but that is my vision. And I just believe strongly in the power of a city that I feel is large enough to have resources, large enough to be resourceful, but small enough to be responsive and to have some real impact. And it's because of the size of Macon and what I see in the city of Macon that this is a major part of my vision. Simply put, an increase in expectations is what I'm after. That when we look at students, they look within the mirror and people look at each other, that we look and see that we can do more, that we can be more together. And then we commit our resources and our time and our heart and everything that we have in order to be at a higher level, both as an example for our students, but as workers in this vineyard. With that said, let's talk impact. And I'm gonna talk impact on both ends. And of course I wanna start with impact in terms of highlights and celebrations. But before I do that, it's important that you understand BCSD by the numbers. Here's what we're represented from a racial standpoint, from students who are engaged in what we call our early intervention programs, students who are English language learners, you see those percentages, students who are receiving, who are receiving special education services, and students who are in our gifted services. This gives you a good snapshot in terms of how we, how we lay out those 21,400 plus students. That's not my lip gloss, by the way. 
Let's celebrate for a minute. 87.07% is our current graduation rate. You can clap it up for that. This is up six points from 2022 and the result of the hard work of several bodies, both inside the district and outside the district. And this is positioning us to make dreams come, come true for more students all over the city of Macon. And we're very proud of this data point. But as I continue, um, we have one distinguished Georgia Title I school, three reward schools, we have 15 PBIS schools as positive behaviors, interventions, and supports. And what you just saw was a great example of, of what happens in the space of our, our schools that's not just about academics, but, but creating a whole child experience. We have uh, 10 Leader in Me Lighthouse Schools. And did y'all hear them talk about the habits? Did you hear the habits? That's all Leader in Me. It is embedded in the lifeblood of our district and has made a tremendous impact. Uh, the Governor's Finance Office Associations gave us a, a certificate of achievement of excellence in financial reporting. How important is that? As it relates to the taxpayer dollars, that, that means a lot. It's important for you to know that we are being rewarded on how we do business on that space. And then, of course, our school board. Our school board was recognized as an exemplary board of education. That is the highest level of achievement in the Georgia School Board Association for a school board. Very happy for that and very grateful for your leadership. And we also won the Leading Edge Award uh, for our community-inspired strategic plan, where there are several individuals inside this room who helped us to create our new strategic plan. Let's talk pathways. When you get hungry, y'all, you're going to see this bus going down the road. We have our own food truck. Yes, indeed. And we have, yeah, come on, clap it up for that. Absolutely. And as we think about the great uh, opportunities in agriculture, agriculture has extended to elementary school, we have a mobile learning lab, you see the inside here, and we have a huge announcement, Mayor Miller, don't we? Huge announcement coming. A, a great partnership where Mayor Miller had, had, had exposed us to an opportunity, we took that opportunity, and now we're ready for a big announcement. Can't tell you right now, but I just wanna put that teaser out. And currently we have 729 students participating in dual enrollment, and that is either a degree program or an occupational program. And this is up significantly. So this number is on the rise, and we realize the importance of allowing students and affording them the opportunity to pursue college credits before they go to college. That's a game changer, and we look forward to that growing in time. You can keep, keep clap all you want, but I'll get into the challenges. I'll be on the challenges in just a minute, so keep the clapping going to balance everything out. Um, Ongoing exposure to life after high school is critical. We have what we call Future Workforce Fridays. Raise your hand if you have participated in Future Workforce Fridays. Is anybody inside the room who, yes, yes, some people are in here. And this is this experience, is it every two weeks? Every two weeks that we stop the presses and all of our sixth through 12th grade students are able to hear from somebody in an industry and go to a website that has all of these awesome engines of information to help feed their dreams and feed their thoughts and feed their hopes in terms of tangible data and tangible resources to get them ready for the next level. So while we're wildly after graduation, we're wildly after something well beyond that more than anything else. And that helps us out a great deal. We were just awarded the Georgia Clean Air Bus Grant. We will have electric buses in the, in the, in the community. And part of that huge announcement is gonna be in service to helping our students prepare themselves to know what to do with electric buses and to create a great career out of it. And of course, I could go on and on about students and staff with state and national leadership roles and recognition. Macon is on the map because of Bibb County Schools. And uh, we feel great to be a contributor to all the great things happening in the city of Macon. If you didn't know, we have a, uh, a student who has her own store, Brittany. This was part of the state's flex program, which helped students get exposure and experience and readiness for entrepreneurship. This program led to one of our students scoring, uh, being second in the state of Georgia and having seed money to start her own business. We had a grand opening. It is at 484 Mulberry Street, so if your skin is getting dry and chalky over this winter time, just come to 484, come to Brittany. She has some great skincare uh, uh, products. But this is a big deal for us. You know, you know what it means to have a kid to graduate in May and not start her business, continue her business at a higher level right after high school. 
And we want to make that dream come true for even more students. Springdale, whoo, have y'all been down, is it Northside Drive? Yes. North, have you been down Northside Drive and seen that awesome edifice? We are just so grateful to continue to use our East Floss dollars to build the best and most beautiful buildings for those students who deserve what? The best. And this is an example of our students getting the best. This slab pales in comparison to what you see right now uh, on Northside Drive. And we're grateful to ICB Construction and others who worked with us to build what is going to be another awesome edifice. And this past fall, we did our Student Success Expos. And this was so important to start planting the seed of increased involvement and engagement. We literally went to everybody's community. We partnered with recreation centers, with Wesleyan College, with Middle Georgia State University, and others to bring our parents and our students out to bolster a higher level of engagement in the academic progress and success of our students. So it's important for us to continue that journey because we realize um, we can't do this by ourselves. And it is a journey, and I'm going to talk about that challenge in just a minute, to get everybody involved and engaged. Have y'all thought about the fact that COVID not only impacted people going back to work, and people going back to church, and going back to other spaces they were used to, but it also impacted people going back to regular life in terms of school. You'd be amazed to know that that was impacted the same way that other levels of involvement was. And we're suffering the brunt of that, so we're pushing really hard to re-engage parents and get them, get them into a space where they can fully support everything that we're doing. With that said, I want to share some data with you. And uh, what you see here is our average daily attendance. And I want you to note the green. And the green shows you, for the most part, we're at a, a, a decent level of attendance. But we're not at 100% attendance. But we do have the majority of our students who on a daily basis are coming to school with some exceptions. Some of those are weather days that you see. Um, but we're happy to report that for the most part, our students are attending school. And that's so important for us in the big picture. I gotta stand over here. I wanna talk behavior. And I want you to take a minute to look at this because I'm showing you, and we're being kind of transparent here, I'm showing you disciplinary incidents from 2014. 16,421 referrals. But what you see is a steady progression and steady movement in terms of significantly decreasing incidents. We will never decrease incidents to zero for children. Because y'all had incidents too, didn't you, when you were a kid? <laughs> I know you did. Telling the tale if you say you did not. But what we're happy to see is that there's a greater level of focus. And if you look right here, this is where we are in terms of this school year. So we're already trending to be below where we were last year. That means a lot to us that students can come to school and now focus more and not engage in incidents because now they have a better sense of focus and feel like they're in a better space. So we're proud to celebrate that. This also shows you the number of incidents uh, that have been obtained by students. And what I want you to see here is that we have 94.9% .9 of our students district-wide who've had, to this date, zero to one referrals. That is huge. And it tells you the majority of our students are coming to school and they're not experiencing incidents. But I do want to bring light to a percentage of students who've had two to four referrals and a percentage of students who've had five or more at this time of the school year. I'll speak more about that in just a minute. The impact of daily instruction shows increases in our students performing in our classrooms. Um, that is, if I could call that number one, it's number one. Academic performance is number one all day long. We have two things we're after. We're after this bar of proficiency, which we want everybody to reach, but we're also after growth towards that bar. And I want to show you just a few slides to help you understand what I mean when I say growth. We take a test called the beacon, and the beacon is in place to help us measure the growth of our students. And what you see here is the beacon at the third, fourth, and fifth grade level that measures low growth, typical growth, and high growth. And if you see, the majority of our students are experiencing typical to high growth. We're happy for that. That means we're moving in the right direction, but there's still work to do in that space. For mathematics, this shows you the average scale score. And if you look at the average scale score from our fall assessment to our winter assessment, you also see evidence of growth as far as student performance is concerned, which tells us we're heading in the right direction. 
If I go to elementary beacon for math as well, you see the percentages of typical to high growth, but I do have to call out, you see those numbers of low growth, they grow. Math continues to be a challenge area for us in the academic space. Let me pause for a minute. Dr. Sims, why are you sharing these, these data with us? Why are you sharing this information? I want you to not only be thinking about Bibb County, but I want you to be thinking about yourself. Because at the end of the day, I want to go back to what I started with. We cannot do this work on our own. We'll lead it all day. But I want you to see data points and hopefully see yourself in this space of supporting us in some way, shape, or form. So as I continue, let's go to middle school. The beacon, measuring growth, you see evidence again from fall to winter of growth if you look at the bars. If I go to ELA growth in the same area for the beacon, you see the percentage of students who are in typical to high growth, but also some students who are in low growth. So as we look at these data, we are concerned about the students who are experiencing low growth. And we want to continue to push these students who are experiencing high growth because we see, see some real opportunities in terms of their ultimate performance in this space. If we go to high school, something interesting happens. And what this shows you is our star. And the star is an assessment. It also helps us to see where students are in terms of their reading. I'm going to give you my personal and professional opinion of these data. When students get older, they become more educated decision makers. Whether that is the, in the affirmative or not. And I experienced it in my home where I had a student who didn't always show his full potential. And I had one who showed his, her, her full potential. But both of them had amazing potential but on different timelines. And I, I think what you see here is not just that we have students performing at the beginning level, but we have students who on this time, in this space, on this test, did not give us their best. I can say that based on 29 years of experience and what I've seen myself in classrooms. So it's important for you to know these data from two perspectives. It does indeed represent where some students are, but there's also a reflection of what students are deciding to demonstrate during these critical times where we need to know where they are. So while I draw attention to the percentages of students who are in our developing, proficient, and distinguished levels, I cannot dismiss how many students perform at the beginning level. Math, same sentiment. Here's what's critical for us as a school district, and this is the, the, a, a different kind of way. Who remembers the ITBS? Okay, that was the only test you took that year, wasn't it? That was it, okay, times have changed. And, and we're in a time and space where we're measuring where students are in terms of our Georgia accountability systems is critical. Some of it is required so that we have a firm grasp on where students are. And a lot of it is beneficial because knowing where student, student is helps us to get them to that next space. As I continue, I cannot leave out uh, core class performance. And if you see here, we have at least half of our students at the end of our first semester who scored uh, at least an A or a B. But I want you to see the distribution because we have students who scored A's, B's, C's, and 20% of our students who failed courses. Now, that indicates a couple of things. Number one, it indicates the opportunity for us to continue to work with those students and give them chances to recover those credits. But it also indicates that we don't want to play around with the bar. We want to keep the bar high enough so that when students graduate, that they graduate with something meaningful when they come to Wesleyan and Central Georgia Tech and Mercy University and Middle Georgia State University, they are prepared to do so. So while I'm dismayed that students have failed courses, I also get it to some extent because we are in this wake up phase of life right now with our students and trying to get them to understand the importance of literally everything that they do. Raise your hand if you were 14, 15, 16, and 17, and you thought that everything you did in school was important. There it is. All day long. That hasn't changed, y'all. Does that help you understand these data? So, I want to make sure you see that. And again, I want you to be thinking about yourself in terms of how can I render support. But it goes both ways. Let me talk about the other side of impact. Because times have changed. And I don't know if y'all take time to think about this, but students literally exist now with the entire world in their hands. They can access the entire world. That is a blessing and it is a curse. 
I thank the good Lord Almighty that I didn't grow up during a time where I could access the world. Now, let me take you back in case you forgot, because back in our day, our access to the world was the Encyclopedia Britannica, those 12 channels on your TV, where 10 of them turned off at 10 o'clock at night, and then it da, 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 da. Some of y'all learned to start Springer Banner because of TV, then who remembers that? Dating myself, who, come on now, come on, don't leave me out here by myself. Who remembers the, the national anthem playing at 11.59? It's time to go to sleep. That was, that was it. And why was it it? Because they said there's no reason for stuff to keep playing on the TV when you should be asleep, getting yourselves ready for the next day. But times have changed, haven't they? We learned the world as far as our bikes would take us. And that was it. So I want to draw that as you think about well, why are kids not reading on grade level? And, and why are kids not performing as great as they could? I have to bring light to the fact that they are living in a very different and a much crueler world. That's why I need you. So our challenges continue. And there are five challenges I want to illustrate for you. The first one is literacy. I want to talk a little bit about engagement. And of course, recruitment and retention, because again, our students deserve the best. Mental health and wellness continues to be something that is high on our list in terms of a priority. And then I want to talk about readiness. So as we start, I want to say very simply, one of our biggest issues is students reading below grade level. And we have that existing across all grade levels. We see growth in that space, but if you go back to some of the slides, if they're in your head, you will notice that we had students performing at the beginning level. And if I had time, I would show you more slides that indicate we still have some students who are not accessing the curriculum fully because they're, they're those reading gaps that they have. So I want to call that out as a challenge, but a challenge where we need as much help and support that we can possibly get. Some of those agents are in this room right now, and I want to thank you uh, for the support that you render in that space. Engagement. In terms of engagement, let me start from the bottom. I will let you know that students told us, I want my parents to ask me how my day was. I need a space inside my home so I can study in peace. I want to be able to do better, and, and I need the support of adults. And this picture is just one example of several where we got to sit around and just talk to students and hear their voice. They gave you seven habits up here, but habit number eight is find your voice. And we're encouraging our students to do that. But a, a huge issue here is authentically engaging students in the learning experience, such that every day they come to school, they feel like they can give and will give 100% of their time and their effort and their energy to see how far they can go. I wish I could tell you that we have every student there. We don't. I wish I could tell you that I had 100% parental involvement. I do not. I wish I could tell you that we, that we had 100% community support. We're headed in the right direction, but we don't have it 100, at 100% right now. I wish I could tell you every student came to school every single day. This next slide is gonna really show you something. I want you to look at our chronic absenteeism rate as it currently stands. This is not a Macon, Georgia issue. This is a nationwide issue. And if you have paid attention to the news, they are talking about chronic absenteeism from the perspective of the home. If we could wake up, bathe, clothe, feed, and transport every student, not only in buses, but in personal vehicles, I believe we would, for a slight fee. You're supposed to laugh, y'all gonna laugh. But we can't do that, it's unrealistic. So when you talk about a parental involvement, something as simple as ensuring that we don't have 26 point, let me illustrate this, 26.179% of our students have already missed 10% or more of the academic school year. Did I quote that right, Mr. Cassidy? That means we're at day 110, that's 11 days of school, missed for various reasons. That is an issue. Couple that with all these great things happening inside the classroom, and you miss it. And then it's time to take an, exa an exam, but you missed it. Does it help you better understand some of our results? Absolutely so. So I want to call that out. This, this is a challenge, and I need you to know this challenge. Mental health and wellness. Students told us, this hurts my heart, y'all. I, I gotta tell you this one quote I got from a kid. 
I asked them about how they felt safe in their schools. The majority of them gave us nines and tens in terms of, I feel really safe. One kid said, I'm a two. And I said, why are you a two? That kid said, I, I'm, true story, I'm not confident that if I hide behind this desk and somebody comes in this building to shoot, that that desk would support me and protect me. Was that even on your mind when you were a kid? Think about that in terms of other things that are on our students' minds. So, so, so this mental health and wellness piece is so critical from a community and a school safety standpoint, which is why we stand behind MVP and other efforts that are trying to curb violence and all the work that Sheriff David Davis is doing to, to keep our streets safe and supported. And everything that we do and that our board supports in terms of school safety, it means a great deal. But I will let you know that we have students who are concerned about community safety and school safety. But the other part is keeping our front lines motivated because there's a lot that all of our teachers are carrying on their shoulders. I've even been to some schools who are concerned about coming through the community from time to time and their own safety. And we try to give them as much assurance as we possibly can, but I have to call this out as a continued challenge. And not just the safety part, but the impact it has on the wellness and the mental health of our students and some of our staff. Recruitment and retention, this is a big one. We are in competition for the best and brightest talent and we're doing our best to present something that is meaningful uh, so that people will want to come and work and thrive in the city of Macon and a part of our school district. But teacher shortages is a critical issue that all of us are facing as, uh, as, as bodies of people, as bodies of school districts. Uh, compensation continues to be something that is at the forefront of our thought processes. And we want to position ourselves so that we can offer the best salaries to attract and retain the best and brightest. I need you to understand that as we get ready to go into future budget seasons. And then there's a lack of available certified teachers. Te people are not going into education like they used to. We are grateful for people who have decided to become educators but it puts us in a space where we have to work with partners and other organizations to develop their skills and get them up to par so that they can be incredible inside our classrooms. And I can tell you example on ex upon example of great, great educators in our district. But we want to grow everybody to that space. It helps us, however, to have access to a great pool of available certified teachers who want to come to Bibb County School District and bless our children. With those in mind, I want to share with you my budget and strategic priorities. And I want to share them with you from more a strategic standpoint, and I have five. The first one, given the data that I share with you, is strength and literacy. And that is to build access to academic content. And what I mean by that is this. I want a student to be able to go into a classroom at whatever grade level and feel like he or she has everything they need in their back pocket to fully access that curriculum, which translates to a student reading above grade level. We have to get there. And I believe that we can get every single student there. You will see numbers fly off the charts in terms of progress and success. So in no particular order, strength and literacy. The second one is readiness, building access to future opportunities. Do me a favor real quick. I want you to raise your hand in this room if you have done anything to support our district and giving our students access to future opportunities. Workforce related, college, thank you. Give a, give a, hand, give a round of applause to all these people with their hands raised up. <laughs> Let me go back. Let me go back. Raise your hand, let's do it again. You, I want you to take some credit for some things this morning. Raise your hand if you've done anything in the area of literacy, whether you've been a reading coach, a tutor, reunited, any level of support. Give them a round of applause. I want y'all to see. It's not like I'm asking for something new, but I'm asking to bolster the things that we have in place so that every student can benefit. Y'all with me so far? Just say yes. yes. Okay, great. Engagement. We want to build and strengthen internal engagement. And what I mean by this is I recognize that we, as a school district, spend the most waking hours of the day with students. And if I can create the greatest experience with students, with adults inside that building for eight hours a day, 180 days a year, uh, in the summertime as well, I can guarantee you, you'll see numbers fly off the charts. So we're after this engagement piece that we have a culture of community and ownership that leads to a stronger level of student engagement. 
Like I want students to come into the school and know why they're there and take full advantage of it. And they feel that, that, that devil of, I don't want to do it, coming, creeping into their minds. They think about the fact that they're going to get kicked out of their house at the age of 18 and they don't have another choice after that if they don't get it together. That was my reality. <laughs> Man, you better get this education because you can't stay here. And we want students to feel that kind of push and that kind of force. So engagement is huge for us and we're pushing increased engagement with our staff and increased engagement with our students so that we can find this magical connection between all of our resources and the people they are in place for. And right now, they sit like that. And what I want is all day long. So that's another priority. Capacity and retention. We want to make sure we focus on building staff capacity but also that we retain the best and brightest. So we want to make sure we're in a space where we train for high effectiveness and again, offer competitive salaries for all of our individuals so they feel like this is a place where I'm growing and I can live and thrive. And I love the direction that our city is going in, y'all. The city continues to grow. I've been here probably the shortest amount of time and the growth that I've seen since I've been here dwindles in comparison to what you've seen. I remember getting a speeding ticket in 1993, Mayor Miller, and I remember coming to the courthouse, and I saw the courthouse and just a lot of space. And I compare that experience to uh, now, it's like, wow, this is incredible. We just want to be a part of that. That's it. And I want the best and brightest to be here to be a part of that. And then lastly, school improvement. We want to build school level capacity and the overall district infrastructure in this space. And when I say school improvement, that's kind of getting into the weeds of what we do all the time, but it's, it is one of the most important focal spaces for us and that every single school adopts and implements a strong school improvement plan that is student focused and that is targeted towards what happens every single day being aligned with what you plan every single day. But let me personalize it if you don't mind because I'm asking for all of this for Sydney. My, I'm, I'm gonna call her my Sydney. I love this child to death. I'm asking for all of this for these beautiful young ladies on these softball teams who begged me to come out to their games and have found the beauty in not only being present in the school, but also being present to do these extracurricular awesome activities. I'm asking for all of this for my Marley who created my Christmas card last year, an incredible young lady who is thriving in the sixth grade now. Like, and I can hear Marley uh, saying, you know, I really want to be around people who want me to be great. And I want to go to the store, and I want to go to the mall, and I want to go down the street, and I want to go home, and I want to come back and feel that every single adult who passes me has a vested interest in me. I'm saying everything I'm saying for Andrew president of the Lighthouse team at, at Rutland High School. And I'm saying all of what I'm saying for Evelyn, who's at Westside and who's this close to uh, becoming the Gates Millennium Scholar. And I can hear these two saying, I I'm ready to lead, but I still need the support of this entire community. Thank you, Dr. Sims and school district for what you're doing, but I need the support of this entire community. And I'm looking at my friends and they need the exact same. I'm saying all this for Sawyer, who sits in his classroom every single day with his peers, and, and I'm sure he sees things from, from, from a little kid's standpoint, but one day he's going to continue to discover who he is, and I want to be able to say to Sawyer, Sawyer, we got you, man, all day long. I say all this for Kobe, who's made milestone jumps, and I'm just so proud of what he has become. But I know Kobe is counting on you the same way. He's not going to be able to come in front of you on a microphone and ask, so I speak on behalf of Kobe this morning. I speak on behalf of Leah, who's a wonderful cheerleader and a wonderful spirit of a student who has the world all ahead of her and so many opportunities that can come out of that. Like I literally stand here speaking to you this morning on behalf of these beautiful students. I'm speaking on behalf of my Cameron. Love me some Cameron, who every time she sees me, where have you been? I haven't seen you in a long time. Sorry, Cameron. But when she sees me, we hug, we catch up. I'm speaking on behalf of Corey, who finally found himself when he went to Soar Academy and just a brilliant uh, model of a student. I'm speaking on behalf of that. So every data point I've shared, every, every priority I've shared, every challenge I've shared, I'm asking for your continued engagement, but not just you, 
but for you to go out and look for others, your neighbors, your cousins, your friends, your coworkers, to say, hey, Dr. Sims is asking for us to get behind this school system, and he's suggesting that if we get behind the school system, it's gonna benefit everybody. Sounds good, why don't we do it? I say this on behalf of Jeremiah, who came dressed because he thought I was gonna wear a suit when we went to lunch. <laughs> Boy, did I mess that up. I messed that up big time. I say it on behalf of Abigail, who said, you better come see me on my birthday. Who's just looking for adults and other people around them to love on them and care for them as much as possible. I speak on behalf of Maylin, who loves cheering, loves life, but has a life ahead of her that's gonna be paved by co-creators of her path. And I'm looking at the co-creators of her path. I say it on behalf of my Chloe, and you cannot tell Chloe I'm not her uncle. <laughs> that's, my, that's my girl all day long, who has the brightest, most beautiful personality, and one of the things as I think about Chloe and all these other students, how long can we keep them smiling? How much can we produce for them in terms of opportunities? And how willing are we to be a part of that? I say it on behalf of all of these students who are award winners, full of energy, on microphones, and busy at work in all of our classrooms. That's who I come to you today on behalf of. And all I'm humbly asking for all of you to do is to respond to a call to action. Our call to action is built by Bill, empowered to learn, lead, innovate, and serve. And here's what we say as I close. What we suggest is that every single student, once they have experienced life in Bibb County, we want them to be able to say that they were built by Bibb. We did not say built by Bibb County School District. We said built by Bibb because we realize we are a part and a partner of this community. So my call to action to you is double fold. I'm gonna personalize it for you. I'm, I'm, I'm switching script just a little bit, y'all. Stephanie, everybody um, reach in your bags before uh, under you. There should be no, uh-uh, the letter, the letter. There should be a letter in your bag. And what I would like for each and every one of you to do is take a moment. Oh, it's in your cup, I'm sorry. In the big cup. Reach in your cup. There should be a letter from a student in that cup. If anything I've tried to do this morning is to make this personal. And I call out the children that I've grown to love and know because this is personal for me. And I would like for you to pause just for a moment. I want you to read your letter. This is personal. Give me third, 20 more seconds. As I conclude, that's your letter. And this state of the district is about our students. And I need everybody to join us in this effort. I've grown 
to love students so much. And I cannot ever express to you how badly I want every student in our city to have their dreams come true. So I want you to find somewhere to put that letter to just remind you of our students' dreams. They're counting on me. They're counting on all my staff members. And like a child uses his fingers, they're counting on you. I want to thank all of you for being here. I want to thank you for what the future of our district holds. And I want to thank you for what we can do together. Thank you so much. As we conclude, I have a beautiful student whose voice and whose spirit just literally blew me away when I first heard her sing. And I asked her to come, Shandria Miles. She's gonna bless us as we close things out with her beautiful voice.
Just Wild. We want every single student to hear just that from you, that you will always love them. So do me a favor as we close things out. I want to take a minute to uh, offer some acknowledgments. One of the most important things we want you to walk away with today is a reminder of why you're here. You're invited to take a commemorative piece of artwork. See all the artwork pieces featured? I don't want one piece of artwork remaining here when we leave. Thank you to the following schools for contributing art for today's events. Alexander II Math and Science Magnet School, Hartley Elementary School, John H. Hurd Elementary School and Academic Magnet, Heritage Elementary School, the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Elementary School, Lane Elementary School, John R. Lewis Elementary School, Springdale Elementary School, Vineville Academy of the Arts, and Williams Elementary School. So you have two reminders I need to, you, for you to place in a space where you will not forget that we need you for our students. Also, thank you to the following sponsors. Wesleyan College. Yes. And if you are here, just wave your hand. Make an occupational medicine. Keep, keep making beer beautiful. Piedmont Urgent Care. Yeah. <laughs> and Kelly Education. Fantastic. So please do me a favor, hang your letters, hang your pictures. Don't forget about us. Pray for us, and thank you in advance for being in our corner and being with us. Hashtag what, y'all? Bill for Bill. Last thing, on your seats is a yellow card, and I promise you I'm done. There's a QR code. If you are interested in getting more connected, if you want to take that QR code around you in your purse and your wallet and just whip it out on folks, let them hit <laughs> Let them pull out the QR code. If they connect to that, we will do the rest as we strive to gather up this entire city in support of everything our mayor is doing, everything our Board of Education is doing, and as we can do our part to make making beer a much better place for all. With that said, I believe we're done. Thank you. God bless you. Have a great rest of the day.